trying to do things in our own strength. Because somehow we can wrap our mind around that. We feel we've, we, we, we've got some kind of ownership of that. That whole business of yielding and trusting, we call it faith. That's a hard, that's a hard concept for so many. We, we too, too many of us in the church are relying more on our efforts and our abilities than we are of, of the Lord's. We say things like, with God, all things are possible. But, but, but are we acting on that? Or are we really acting on, well, mostly what we're pretty sure we could do in and of ourselves if God had nothing to do with it? Is that really where our faith lies? Because as soon as we stretch out past that, I'll say, mm, I don't know. Why? Why don't you know? Why don't you know? The only reason you don't know or the only reason you're unsure is because the it's because of that limited relationship that we tend to have, that limited faith we tend to have. Instead of trusting God with all our heart, leaning not on our own understanding, in all our ways acknowledging Him. Instead of relying on those words, where, where the, the, believing those scriptures that says, we have been given all things pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him, through the Word of God that has called us by glory and virtue, that by these exceedingly great, that by these very words of God, we might be a partaker of His divine nature. 2 Peter 1 3 tells us. We're, we're limiting the Lord. God does his work by the power of the Holy Spirit. I mean, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible talks about the earth being without form and void, and the Spirit of God hovering or brooding across the face of the, of the deep. And God spoke, and the Spirit of God went into action. That's no different than the end of the book that tells us in Revelation 22 that the Spirit. And the bride, as he come. That's how God operates, by his spirit. By his spirit. Perhaps the very reason that too often we are living beneath uh, God's best for us is that we are truly living a spirit-filled life. The spirit-filled life. Come on, church. There's a reason why we're not operating in what Jesus did. There's a reason why we aren't even operating in the greater he spoke of. So we can... We can we could disregard that and, 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 and come up with some reason, or, or, we could, or we could roll it on over to this word. Or we could take these words, hide these words in our heart, or we, we could indict these words. We could, we could plant them in our heart till they, till they grow and produce the very fruit that they speak of. Glory to God. I know we come to church. Thank God for coming to church. I'm glad to be back in church tonight. Amen. I'm glad to see y'all guys. I'm, I'm excited. We're glad to have you here too if you can't make it for whatever reason. But I want to encourage you, as soon as you can, show up. I, how good and pleasant it is when we can be together in unity. Glory to God the Bible talks about. I know uh, when we come to church and we do things like we, we worship and, and we sing and we pray. But friend, there's more to it than just those actions. Those actions in and of themselves could just be religious activity. Just a form of godliness in a sense. Living the spirit-filled life is a life uh, is having faith in God. Living the spirit-filled life is believing and, and, and being obedient and hiding these words in your heart. Amen. And God's watching over his word. He promises us to perform it. A spirit-filled life is a life empowered by God. You might say, uh, you might say, I'm a, I'm, I'm a spirit-filled Christian. Are you a, is your, are you a Christian that is empowered by God? Well, you should be. I agree. But are you? Are you? Or when some small thing says boo tomorrow, or some bigger circumstance says uh huh tomorrow, are you just like, ah, oh, what am I going to do? We got, we, we got this. We got this. The Bible, the Bible talks about uh, we overcome uh, by our faith. Amen. A spirit filled life is a life empowered. By the Spirit of God. Amen. Let's look, if we could, just for a couple moments, over at Acts chapter 1. Acts the first chapter. I'm going to begin reading as you're turning there. Acts 1. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, after that day he was taken up, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he chosen, whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. 
Verse 4 says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, You have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Friend, I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is the very power, the very life source uh, of the church. Let me read on. Uh, listen, uh, verse 7, And he said unto them, uh, or, or let me just pick up in verse 6, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It's not for you to know the times of the season which the Father has put in his own power. In other words, he says, that's not your concern. He goes, but you, but you, verse 8, shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the world. And when he had spoken these things, verse 9, while they beheld, he was taken up. Somebody say taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. He was taken up, which verse 2 tells us that Jesus was walking. Verse 1 tells us Jesus was walking the earth, doing and teaching the word of God until the day in which he was taken up. That, that's verse 9. He was taken up, and after that, through the Holy Ghost, the church operated. Still doing what Jesus was teaching and doing. The theme hasn't changed. What Jesus was doing hasn't changed. It's just now it's through the Holy Ghost. Through the body of uh, the Holy Ghost is giving commandments unto the apostles. Glory to God. He, but you wait until you receive, in Jerusalem, until you receive the promise of the Father. Friend, the Holy Ghost isn't an optional accessory to the Christian life, okay? It's not like, it's not, he's not like, well, you can have power seats or power windows if you so want, or you don't have to have it, or heated mirrors. Or, you know. No, he's a necessity. As a matter of fact, verse 4, uh, Jesus commanded them. Uh, that's not an option. He commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. That's not a suggestion. That's a commandment. Verse 8, you shall receive power. That reminds me of what Zechariah said. Not by might, nor by power, talking about yours, but by my spirit. Saith the Lord. Somebody say amen. 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 We, we, have, we have to get this. See, it's not about how important or how valuable or how gifted or how talented a person in, is in and of themselves. That's not what gets the job done. Not the stuff that God dreams are made of. Amen. The Bible tells us uh, that eye hasn't seen nor has ear heard nor has it even entered the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for you. In other words, what you can accomplish is so much, is so, is so much lower on the scale of what God has for you than you could ever imagine. What you can accomplish in and of yourself is just that's just that doesn't even register compared to the things that God has planned for you and purposed for you and provided the way the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. He delighted in his way. In other words, the, the plan God has for you, the provision to accomplish it, it's all been, it's all been, it's a setup. It's all, it's already, Jesus, God's already walked the road before you and provided what you need. So are you, are you willing to let God do with your life? Amen. What he wants to do, are you willing to let God use you? Willing to let God lead you, guide you? empower you? I mean, how are, how open are you really to serving the Lord? If it's convenient, if you're having a good day, how open are you really to walking in His plan for you? Some people act like God's trying to hide His plan for them from them. Like God, like God, it's like God's will. He's like, it's like hide the point. He's, here's His will. He's like, we got close to it, but I'm going to move it over here. So you can't really find it. It's just, it's just out there dangling like a carrot on a stick. That's not how God operates. God, God's wanting to reveal these things to you. But the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 2 that he reveals these things by his spirit. By his spirit. That's the only way you're going to know the things that God has for you. By his spirit. I mean, think about this. When Jesus chose his disciples, they weren't the smartest cookies in the box. It doesn't seem like. They were fighting amongst themselves all the time. They were, they were from this walk of life, that walk of life. You know, all of them were, uh, you know, uh, brain surgeons like Jethro, you know, Bodine, <laughs> we say. 
You know, there, the, you know, as a matter of fact, the Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27, that God purposely chooses the foolish things of earth to confound the wise. But yet God chose them. Okay? Just ordinary people who allow God to use them. And how? Boy, how did he use them? He chose them. He's chosen you. Just regular people with gifts and issues. With, with, with talents, but perhaps problems. Hello? Just ordinary people that he's called to not, to not walk in his plan in their strength, but in his. But in his. We don't walk in what God has for us in our own strength. It's by his spirit working through us. It's always that way. Don't settle. Church, don't settle for second best. Allow the Holy Ghost to, to, to bring change in your life. You might say, I don't need no change. You need some change. Right? It doesn't matter who you are in here. The Bible talks about going from one degree of glory to another. You, uh, the best haven't arrived in the kingdom of God. There's, there's still more. There's still more. Glory to God. There's still more for you. Hallelujah. He's the one that produces fruit in our lives. Whether it be spiritual fruit or, or a manifestation uh, of the promises of God. He's the one who produces that fruit. Galatians 5 talks about spiritual fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kind, patience, kindness, good. How many could use some of that operating in your life? I know the Howard household could always use a little more love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control operating in it. 365 days, no days off a year. But that's not going to come just because we decide we're going to do it. It's going to come because we allow God to move in our life and flow through our life. The fruit of the Spirit is just that evidence. That's just evidence of a Spirit-filled body. Fruit is what manifests when you allow the seed, the Word. I mean, that's what the seed is the Word. Fruit is the result of, 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 you, of you allowing the seed to, to grow and develop in your life. Because you have the seed doesn't mean that you're walking in the fruit. You've got to allow it to grow and develop into your life. With some people, it's a longer process than with others. With some people, it, it, it's a fast grow. But with others, it takes a little longer. But it's always seed. What's that word? And harvest. Seed. Time. And harvest. Fruit is what manifests when you allow. Love's what manifests in your, in your heart when you allow to grow in your life, to mature in your life. Uh, Mark 4.26 <laughs> the kingdom of God is as a man cast seed unto the ground, and he sleeps, and he and he rises day and night, and and and, and, and the seed groweth, and he know not how. First the blade, then the then the then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. He plants the word. He casts the word into his life, into his heart. Amen. And and he just and he just lets it work. He just lets it work. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, it's like a, a the, Jesus said, it's like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown is the least of all seeds. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all the other herbs in the garden. It's the manifestation. It's the fruit that that word, that these promises will bring, that the Holy Ghost will bring into your life, that will bring the healing, that will bring the refreshing. Uh, he's the one that will keep you going, going, and going when you feel like giving up. He's the oil of gladness, Psalms 45, 7 talks about. He, it's in his presence is fullness of joy, Psalm 16, 11, uh, verse 2. And the joy of the Lord, in the, Nehemiah 8, 10, that is your strength. Glory to God. One more verse, one more verse, Acts chapter 19. We go a little bit longer when we got folk in the house than we do when it's just internet. Because we, 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 we want to we minister to everybody's needs. Glory to God. Acts uh, chapter 19. Verse 1 says, And it came to pass that while Paulus was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples. And he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We've not so much as heard whether, they, the, whether there be any Holy Ghost. In other words, they said, We have no knowledge of that. Now, how many understand? You can't receive something that you don't know anything about. But you have no, we can say it like this in church, that you... You can't get something that you have no word for. They didn't have no. They didn't have no knowledge. They didn't have any word about the Holy Ghost. So that they, 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 it was He wasn't operating in their life. But watch what happens. And He said unto them, unto them, uh, unto what? Then were you baptized? They said unto John's baptism. 
Then said Paul, John Verily, what's he doing? He's giving them some word. Okay? He's giving them some knowledge. Then Paul, uh, uh, John Verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should uh, believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Jesus Christ. When they heard this, in other words, they received that word. Okay? They received that seed. Amen. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them. And they spake with tongues and they prophesied. And all the men were about to. I mean, they, 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 they mm, that's the stuff right there. That's the spirit filled life. That's a description of the spirit filled life. Glory to God. Prophesying, uh, speaking in tongues. Glory to God. That's just some of the characteristics of the spirit-filled life. The reason I read that is because, church, if Jesus needed the Holy Ghost, and we read, or we referred to Matthew chapter 3, where he didn't do anything until the Holy Ghost came upon him. Acts 10, 38 says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, and he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. If Jesus needed the Holy Ghost, Ghost. If the apostles in Acts chapter uh, 1 needed the Holy Ghost, if Jesus told them to, to do not do anything until you've received the promise of the Father, if those apostles needed the Holy Ghost, if over here in Acts chapter 19 we find some certain disciples, you know, years later, if they needed the Holy Ghost, guess who else needs the Holy Ghost? Us over here in Acts chapter 2, as, as a friend of mine says, we need the Holy Ghost too. Book of Acts 2. <laughs> Church, it's by His Spirit. It's by the power of God in the name of Jesus that cancers are driven out, the devils are cast out, that the abundant life is, is lived out. Oh, we need the Holy Ghost, friend. We need the Holy Ghost. The church today, I mean, I, the church has a lot of things that they didn't have in the book of Acts. We got buildings and chairs and AC. Uh, you know, here in the United States, we're fairly free of, of you know, persecution and things like that. But I, I, they had something that I don't know if we understand that, that, if, that if the church in general gets, they had a revelation. Amen? That the Holy Ghost is the life of the church. Somebody say amen. They got it. That the Holy Ghost is the, is the power behind the Christian life. That the Holy Spirit is the power behind living a spirit-filled life. They didn't take one step without Him operating in their life. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is found in Acts 15, 28. It was, it was decision time for the church. And they got together and they was making some decisions. And when they came to their the conclusion, th this is what Acts uh, 15, 28 says. It says this, It seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us. To proceed in such and such a manner. In other words, they didn't make a decision. They didn't make a choice. They didn't do anything in life without consulting the Holy Ghost that, it, that, it, that, it, that, that he approved of it. What about you? How many decisions did you make today that, that, you, that you inquired of the Holy Ghost about? And he said, proceed, sir. Oh, man. You got the witness, as we say sometimes at church. How many decisions did you make today? I'm not talking about necessarily whether... You want to, you know, peanut butter and jelly for lunch. <laughs> I'm not necessarily talking about that. But if you go there, that's fine. You know. But what decisions did you have to make? A consequence, perhaps, that, that when you came to your conclusion, it was because it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to you. See, they had a revelation that I, I, I'm not sure that, that we, that number one, that 